the course details of what is on the Live website, and the formatting is really bizarre. Like, there's one space between one paragraph, then there's three spaces between another one, and then two. It, it's a hack website. Like, how do you spend this much money and you have a hack? You have a website that looks worse than the XFL's website in 2002. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Use code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy right now. Get yourself a first-time match to positive up to 100 bucks. Valero, Texas Open, picks, bets, one and done, plus a recap of what happened in Houston. A look ahead to Live Miami at Doral this week, and then obviously the Masters is coming next week. So now is the time to get yourself in on everything Pat Mayo Experience and Mayo Media-wise. Jeff and I are going Wednesday through Monday at the Circa Hotel, the Stadium Swim in Las Vegas. Paul and Cody for the Dogger Pass podcast. Going to be down there as well. Going to do some live shows, some watch-along. So if you're in the Vegas area, come on down to the Circa. I'll have some more details once we get there and finalize everything. The plan now is to do a third round watch along at the stadium swim for the Masters into UFC 300. It's going to be a time. Jeff Feinberg on the line coming off, hitting a winner. What's it like to hit a winner, Jeff? Oh, yeah, felt nice. Felt nice. Needed one. Felt. I thought for certain I'd have another T2 because the Scotty and the, sorry, Xander and Cam Young. It felt I just get Scotty again. We'd go Scotty bucket hat. Scotty. Scotty just gave charity to the field every week. Maybe that was NBC asking him to do it or the PGA tour. Like I, he's still incredible. It's incredible what he can do without having it. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a very abrupt way to end a sentence, but sure. Yeah. He had a C plus game. Still almost won. I don't think NBC is paying him off so Steven Yeager could win. I think the best thing that could happen for golf with the ratings being down and everything is one guy winning every tournament. Because as we've seen, be it NBA Finals type of ratings, you know, when LeBron's in there, big ratings. When the Warriors are in there, big ratings. When they're not, not big ratings. People like winners. You know, I think that do- people like dominance. People like dynasties. Uh, it's compelling because either you cheer to see that greatness or... Or you like seeing, um, you know, an underdog take on that person. And golf allows for so many scenarios, be it like an old geezer, a young gun, just a middle of the road hack. And yesterday, it literally felt like nine Davids versus Goliath. I made the Twitter joke. It's like watching the Royal Rumble and they they try to toss Yoko Zunes out. It's like everybody who can get this guy. And it's honestly like Scheffler pulled that move where the guy eliminates himself. Where he's like Kane or he just walks over that top rope and wants to go beat someone up in the aisle (laughs) instead of winning. That's what yesterday was. But I'll take it. I needed it. I'll take it. Voice might be a little horse pat. I had a boys night in Niagara Saturday. Oh, good times. Gonna hit that downer. Always, always just. mm. What? I had a boys night in, in, in Niagara. Yeah, I got that on part. Saturday. Of it. What was the second a part? Quick where you're seventy trying? minutes away. We like to do that. Uh, the sundowner. It's just a, it's a lovely. Me and my boys, we love. We just love to make each other laugh. Like we're not the dads who want to fuck. We're just, we're just. Oh man, but it's such a hoot. Put a little poison in the body. Have a hoot. Just good times. Yeah, and you paid off your Feel entire it. weekend. Uh, thanks to Stephen. Oh Yager. no, yeah, yeah. I got, I've gotten killed in some college basketball. Really annoying. I don't even bet that shit. Then how'd you get killed? I mean, like, all year, I don't even watch till the tournament, then I bet that stuff. I'm going to lose so much on the tournament, but lucky I'm that monkey that has a UConn 4-1 to before the tournament, and that had me thinking, in the same reason I bet UConn, I don't really watch college basketball, but I love the tournament, and people around me were like, they're the best, they're the best, they're the best, you got to bet them. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll bet it, 4-1, to that seems so stupid. I think casuals will have that exact same feeling with Scheffler next week. Like, okay, fine. I'll just bet it. I don't care. I don't watch a ton of golf, but this guy, yeah. 
Well, I mean, Gabe used to talk about this all the time when we'd be bickering like, yeah, nine to one is a terrible number when you can bet this guy for 30 to one. He's like, nine to one is, think about like the money you put down on a coin flip NFL game every single week. And now you get this guy at nine to one, if nothing else. And we'll see how it goes with Scotty. I mean, obviously bad things can happen. You could fall out of your sex swing and withdraw from the tournament. Who knows what can happen at the Masters? Anything is on the table. But if you want a sweat on your bet to be there on Sunday, that's your best bet. For, enter- for entertainment purposes only, betting Scotty at like four and a half to one, he's probably going to be there at the end. For like the hyper casuals or my buddies, lap, they just need a body. I'm like, probably like just if you bet Scotty and Brooks, that might not be the best like unit allocation. But if you just bet Scotty and Brooks, you will have something to cheer for on the weekend for sure. I, right? made, I-, I made a master's bet. Did I tell you that? No. Yeah, so I'm in. I, I'm in on Sahith Tagal at 60 to 1. I think he's going to win. He's a firecracker. That 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 ball stri- like he does what he does. As as Sky noted the first week of the season, he's very speedy in vibes. So I guess you can go on that cuz speed is the darling there. Um 60. He was great last year. I it- guess that's where he he feels like he can get up and down there. I'm it's not as long as I would want. Me but... neither, but we're just not going to. So I allocated like a half of what I was going to bet on him at 60. And I'll and listen, if you haven't made the bet, he's down to 50 right now. If you haven't wagered on Thigella and want to, I mean, the last time I picked a winner at the Masters was legitimately nine years ago. So to watch out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as soon as Justin <laughs> Rose couldn't close out Sergio, it was my, my Masters picks have just been down the tubes every single time it's just even Spieth and he got got by Patrick Reed and Fowler got got that year by Reed as well it's just it's been a bad run at the Masters but I like the gala mainly I mean we just saw the ball striking on display at Houston I thought that was super encouraging that was great for his number too because I didn't bet him to win in Houston and I was thinking like what, what would be the best case scenario here for me to still feel good about Sahith going into the Masters it's like oh yeah this guy who just gained eight strokes between driving and approach and bled them all away chipping and putting which is something he just doesn't normally do but I love to see that the ball striking is so good going into the Masters had a top 10 in his debut last year and you hit on the key point if you can keep up this ball striking He is from the Cam Smith and Jordan Spieth school of magic beans, which you do need to be a certain type of contender at the Masters. I feel like he has it. I mean, I just thank God uh, Batia didn't win last week and got got himself into the tournament because I would lose so much money betting on Akshay at the Masters. It would be incredible. There is like... It just, it, the the Chappelle, Rick, or not Rick James skit, the Prince skit just pops out in my mind. Like, as soon as it got super windy and conditions got tough in Houston, Sahith looks like he was just having the time of his life. He was trying to shape shots in everywhere, like being super disappointed if it didn't land a foot away from the pin. The moment that the elements got better and there was no wind, he, it was just like the, the meme. He was just like, this bores me. I don't want to play anymore. Okay, so there is a lot to un- unpack there. I don't think the sin number is is crazy. I would only like it could get bigger again. Yeah, that's why like, I'm saying right? I, I I kept half of it. It's at fifty now. I would expect that number to be higher on Monday when we do the Masters Pick Show. But but if a couple people are seeing what you're seeing, who are like highly respected and like put that up, then he goes to forty. He really does. Um, because there's always a couple guys that really do get shrunken but what i really want to take from what you just spoke about is i have been like neutral on um batya neutral i i don't know uh, something flipped in me this week despite him falling off the pace on sunday i i don't know. i'm like a fan now i didn't bet him i've never bet him uh but i i'm like in he's he's the exact profile of dudes i love losing money on like a straight flusher, and you don't have a clue where that putter's going. <laughs> and that's 80% of the tour. But he can hit 40-footers, miss five-footers. He will bogey the easy hole and then fucking, like, stick it to four feet on the hole that's playing, you know, a fourth of a stroke over par. I, I'm like, yeah, I, 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 the goods. The goods. He's good. He could big boy something. Big boy something's going to come for him. Maybe not this season, but it's going to come. Well, I'm glad that you and the collection of people who bet Jagger every week not only got whole, but now are in the positive on betting Steven Jagger over and over. 
I really wish Toasty would have won. We need Toasty in our lives. The PGA Tour needs Toasty to be a real thing because he is pure entertainment for four straight hours. Pure entertainment. What a guy. And him, like, standing up to Fino on, on Saturday, most young guys would just defer him. I watched uh, – there was a video that circulated with his college coach who was like, people need to understand he's – like oh, he grew up dirt poor. He doesn't know like golf etiquette means nothing to him, apparently. And everyone's got to nudge him always to stay focused. You even saw in his post round interview, they asked him about the chip on eighteen, and he like was ready to like just say like fuck shit fuck, and he just like just like he like held it in and just like smiled. So maybe he's reining something in, but he's a firecracker, and he, I. It's almost like Pat, though. I will say, if you're cheering against a golfer because you've got a better somewhere else, a guy somewhere else, you want Toasty playing with that high-end guy. Like, he might put, like, a guy like Xander Cantlay, like, in a, like, he could he could be very distracting in some ways for other golfers, but I am, I'm here for this. I'm here for a psychopath who's not stealing other guys' watches and shit. Yeah, he... Like, he can't hate me for liking him because he's a thief. I just really want to like this guy. So, I, that. so I, I saw the, uh, the fried egg just has a bunch of toasty stories that are coming out. One of them was when they got the, the, the graduates from the corn fairy tour to get your card, which he did last year. There's this story of toasty who they opened up the bar to everyone to celebrate. And someone just looked over and he chugged an entire bottle of champagne. And then just took it and threw it as hard as he could into the water trap. and just started celebrating with the crowd. Like dude rules. We need him on the president's cup team. Like, can we make him inter- oh. can we make him Argentinian Poulter for our team? That sounds great. It sounds incredible. Problem is, we might be too good guy culture to even entertain it. He'll take fucking Mac Hughes or something. Yeah. Like, like, oh, 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 hopefully not. I want this guy to have a firecracker of a summer. Like just some insane. I don't know that he could win something huge, but like just run off these second places in huge events, be getting these points, maybe even pull off like a jabroni tournament. I don't know. I'm here for it. Become, yeah, get people's attention. And it is funny because he's starting to catch like casuals attention and they have no idea about these like backlog of like niche viral golf stories that we have all of us like listeners have sort of been catching on to the last couple of years as they've circulated all these weird antics, like it's crazy shit, but yeah, I don't know. Apparently he's literally came from nothing like zero, like less than zero. He used to and take, he doesn't give a fuck. He, he ain't out there to make a friend. And I'll tell you, there's too much good guy culture on the PGA tour. Too many of these guys are too good friends. And part of that is, you make so much money for finishing 27th place that you could only be happy for your friends when they finish first, second, third, fifth, seventh. Like you're making so much money. Kisner makes so much money as he jokes, finishing where he finishes. They're like, of course, you're still able to be happy and good buddies. Like there's no rivalries. Everyone's having a great time. This guy, he's literally said, I am not, I am not here to make friends. I do not care if I piss people off, but We'll see. We'll see how that like works. It'd be what? funny if like Rory tries to have like a sit down with them to like, <laughs> yo, like you're distracting guys. Like you gotta chill a little bit. He's basically Happy Gilmore. Kick him off the tour, Doug. <laughs> We're gonna start getting that stuff. Imagine from, like... he got into. The... Imagine he want. Yeah. What would you say if he want? He got in the Masters. Is that yeah. what you were hoping for? Just him being. A... Yeah. All yeah. Of it. I just want him around. I just want him to be. Like, he doesn't need to be at the Masters. I mean, I'd love if he was at the Masters, but just when we get to Heritage, although that's an elevated event, so he's probably not into that. Although maybe he's played him his way into the Aeon Five based on his second place finish. I don't know, but you know, get us at the Byron Nelson, get us at the Zurich. Just just be on the leaderboard so you can get TV time. That's all I'm asking for. But was there anything less surprising that the guy who was making every putt all week, that would be your guy, Thomas Dietrich, that the moment he had a chance to win, he missed every putt? Every Full, full Dietrich, like seven, eight feet, five feet, like clutch big, eight feet for eagle. Oh, my God, the shorty for the ties. He went full Dietrich in the moment that he always, I guess, goes full Detri. 
And it doesn't matter if it's the PGA tour or literally a European tour event in Belgium versus like three guys no one's ever heard of. What a lovely, what a lovely motion though. That guy has when striking the ball. Oh, it's so pretty. I actually, one of the takeaways that I had from Houston was, A, I really like this course. There's no tri- Ooh, yeah. There's no tricks to it. It's just hard. And, like, to have a winning score of minus 12, like, that's a good winning score. Every And we got a fantastic, I mean, you had Scotty, like you said, versus a bunch of guys trying to kill Scotty. But there was 10 guys in contention. Like, it was flopping everywhere. NBC did a piss-poor job of keeping up with everyone. And who was, like, I had money on Taylor Moore. I was actively rooting for Taylor Moore to win. He cashed it each way. So I walk away with a winning week. Not so much like you, but it's nice we both had a winning week in the same week. First time that's happened in, like, three years. But... Like he got him. Taylor Moore started two under through two holes. And then like we get to the you know a par three that's coming up. Like you don't see it's like, oh yeah, Taylor Moore's tapping in for par. It's like, I couldn't, you couldn't have cut to him just where his tee shot went. Couldn't see that. Like for Ye- Jagger for a while was being buried on the coverage, despite the fact that he was winning the tournament. I get we need to see every shot of Scotty. And then, you know, on the next way down, you get to see everything that Finau does, because those are obviously the biggest names. I understand that. But we need to figure out a way to get some more of these guys in the mix, especially when they're winning the tournament at the time on Sunday. That would be very helpful in trying to at least tell your story of what is happening in this fucking tournament. But Taylor Moore impressed me. And not so much like he's playing in the Masters next or in not this week, next week. I think that not necessarily his game sets up really well for Augusta National, just but his approach play has been really poor. But the way that he was able to maneuver around the greens the last two weeks, both at Valspar and I think you're going to see, I wouldn't say it's like super similar, the Houston greens to the Augusta greens, but the green complexes, like the runoff areas, the tight lies are very similar to Augusta. Augusta obviously way faster than what we saw at Memorial Park, but the way that he was able to control his speed on a lot of those chips, like he ended up gaining, the hell was it? 4.8 strokes gained around the green. I don't think he chipped the ball in all week. He was just putting every, every time he missed a green, it was just a two feet automatic putt in and I think he finished just outside the top 30 last year at Augusta I think I like him to finish inside the top 30 this year I think that's a bet I'm going to be looking at top 30 on Taylor Moore I could totally see that Pat uh you mentioned that around the green stuff he had some lovely long range par putts on the weekend as well uh obviously there were some putts that didn't drop but uh, that first hole playing what a fourth fourth of a stroke over par and he sticks it to five feet. He didn't see anybody do that all week. I love the golf course. Everything you said, it's hard to find real trouble, but the whole thing is a brute. Everything. Even when you're in a nice position, they got those Augusta like tabletop greens that can make things really hard. And I've never seen a tournament where so many guys were like short or in fairway on par threes, like, like consistently. So yeah, full marks. Great, fun, fun course. Um, I'm sure ready to move on, but my moment of the week for Jaeger, my moment of the week for Jaeger, it was Saturday and it was 16. He put it in the water. He put, oh, damn it, that's it. Takes his drop, hits it to 19 feet, buries it. I know he made the clutch putt for par on Sunday on the back nine, uh, a couple of them, the nine footer where he hit it over the green with uh, where it was short, but it was that when you save par from the water, you, you have my heart, you have my heart. So that was the that was the stroke for me. Scotty gave five, six, seven of them away, but that was my saver. That was the one that that meant the most to me. Looking back, well, it's funny that I mean Scotty didn't putt poorly. But he also didn't putt like, as well as he had been putting. So it was probably unrealistic to think anyone would continue to gain that many strokes putting and just kind of flip it from I'm a guy who misses every putt to I'm a guy who makes every putt. This is more of what we saw throughout the course of some of his like middling events. And listen, when you gain a half stroke on the field putting, he was the only guy inside the top 10 to not gain at least, what, 2.7 strokes? That was Horschel. Horschel gained three. He was the second worst of anyone who's inside the top 10 in terms of putting. And then you had Fina, who lost three, uh, because he just gagged away like three and a half on the first round. Not as bad as Zala Torres, who lost five in the first round on the greens. But not, not a good sign. Not a good sign. For Zala Torres? 
Yeah, I, don't know. I that was just such a kick in the nut. That just had me so worried for the Masters. But he rebounded. I mean, he pl- did better, but he was just so deep he, in it at that point. Yeah, he he lost another stroke per round on the green throughout the course of the next three. But he rallied himself to make the cut. You know, he gained tee to green. Like, I'm not worried about Zalatoris at all. And in fact, this might actually just give us a better number on him at Augusta. I'm not worried about him at Augusta. For whatever reason, he seems to putt really well on those greens. <laughs> Seems to be a happy place for him. I'm excited. But we saw with Scotty that I just I know that he gained so many strokes on approach because he's going to do that. And when he stuck it on 18, it's funny because when he was down two heading into 16, he was eight to one. I really looked at it. I was like, should I just go like all in? He's eight to one. He's down by two strokes. There's a bunch of nobodies (laughs) on the leaderboard. You could theoretically eagle both 16 and 17 with the right shot. And it started clicking in the back of my mind. It's like, oh yeah, everyone else is going to bogey 18 and Sheffler's going to birdie 18. And that's how this tournament's going to be decided. It's a hard hole. He'll figure out, he'll he'll do the thing where he makes birdie on the hole, everyone else bogeys, because that's what Scheffler does. And that's where his game is so good. He ended up just missing the putt and he wasn't able to get it up and down on 17. And then you had Taylor Moore who went into the water on 16, the hole that everyone needed to birdie. He ends up losing by a stroke. He misses an eagle putt from like nine feet, misses a three footer for birdie i think on number 10 like all these guys had their opportunity that's why you know jagger making that 20 foot par save on 14 or 15 whatever it was was just like oh wow like this is it like he, he's gonna but, do uh, it so many dude Fino, he ma- he couldn't make a five fucking footer after hitting everything and then he misses the two footer on 16 so what a what a wild cluster but even to jagger he missed he left so many putts like right on the doorstep. He missed a makeable. He didn't birdie 16. He missed the seven footer on 17. And yeah, you always leaving the door open. It's like you're not going to fucking take it. You're just going to let Scotty walk through the door, people. Scotty missed the five footer. How much? I know that you had the uh, the charity bet on Norin, where you you matched your wager on Norin to donate to the Children's Texas Hospital. But when he went, he almost had an albatross on number eight, but he had two eagles on the front nine. Did you have that in the back of your mind? It was like, oh my god, he's going to do this. Yeah, I thought he was going to do that full Wentworth uh, win, where he just shot eight under and came, like totally blitzed the field back when he would win all those European events. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. The TV time for Norn and Billy Ho yesterday just crushed the numbers. The, the, the TV time those two guys got for Sunday, Bill, no one has gotten crushed sh- harder than Billy Horschel, I think, this morning. I don't, I didn't bet it, but it seems like a lot of people have. And uh, Norn, I mean, like, he's still being priced with fucking good golfers. Fuck me. Yeah, no, Norn and Horschel are the same number as Fleetwood and Harmon. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. And I I get, like, you want to call your shot. There's a lot of, like, quality players here. You do, I mean, you do wonder how they'll, the week before the major. But um, I think, like we said, Pat, there was that whole era of golf that they didn't like to play the week before the major. Why? Because tiger didn't play the week before the major and he was great at majors so there's a generation of golfers it's like i'm gonna do what he does there's a lot of golfers in this generation that have knowledge no like form carries you come in in form you win in form like you don't need to start your form at to by winning the masters you got to come there go getting it so i think all these guys despite not trusting them maybe other than like it's easy to say rory i don't think anyone's here on a field trip i mean that i mean that they're all here to fucking win, not just come sixth place and get points and money and prep. I would think so. Yeah. Get your game in gear. Try to peak right now. I mean, is anyone going to be like, oh, yeah, Oberg is, you know, he's, he, I mean, uh, he's going to have the narrative he's never played at Augusta before, which, you know, there hasn't been a first time winner at the Masters since 1983, I think it is, or 1979, whatever Fuzzy Zeller won. So that's going to be working against him anyway. But no one's going to say, oh, Ludwig won this week. No chance he can win next week. It's probably more like, oh, shit, he's coming in in the best form possible. Same as Rory. What's the case? So Rory, I think Scheffler is four and a half to win the, win the Masters. I think Rory's nine to one. If Rory wins this week, what does that do to the top of the market? Scheffler will still be the favorite, but he might drop to like five, five and a half, and then Rory would be like seven. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a fair estimate. I'm actually seeing Rory's at 11 right now. Pat. Ooh. There we go. 
Um, yeah, tens and elevens, pretty much across the board. And I don't do people try like I love John Rahm. I've always said he was my favorite of like the big big guys, but I would like he hasn't won on live yet, despite playing well. Um, and in a way that like Brooks won twice before last year's Masters, right? He won in Jeddah, then he won wherever they played the week before. Yeah. Yeah. I love Rom. I think he's as good as there is in the world, other than Scotty Scheffler, and his best is probably as good or better. But, but I don't like I. This is I don't know if this makes me a live hater because all the live guys came, but like I don't know. Is can he flip the switch? Yeah, I love to see him play great this week, and he should be a. And he has got the sorry, and he has the defending champion obligations. Like there are a lot of live players. I actually really think could take this home, and wouldn't be shocked at all if Rom does. I don't know though. He's a guy that I, I don't really think I'm interested in, and well, I'm always interested in him at the Masters. Well, we'll talk about that when we talk about the Masters. But anything else on Houston? Like, did did this result from Tony encourage you at all? Yes, because he's still striking it beautifully. He got in his own way. He's played well at the Masters before. Like he he's had great success there. Um. And he seems comfortable. Like, that's where he has putted well. So, I don't know. But missing a lot of four and six footers on the weekend, it started on his first whole Saturday, is not as bad. But I, the way he's striking it, I, I like it. If he's quietly up there, I think his number got crunched a bit. But I think by next week, he'll be forgotten after good players play well this week. Uh, it'll go back to, like, north of 50, 60 to 1, probably. Yeah, I, I would guess that, especially... If someone like if Connors wins again this week, all of a sudden he goes from eighty. I bet that was another uh, futures bet I made. I bet on Corey Connors. The hell was it? I should have wrote this down. I can, I can check the app because I bet it this morning. Corey Connors forty to one to finish top twenty in all four majors. Oh, I like that. I yeah, the that's straight banana standing it right. Yeah, just like everyone will be like, oh, he can win this one. He can win this one. It's like, no, he'll come like T13 or T16 or something like that. Just let him come top 20. It's like the Batia thing. Like I, I asked Byron on last week's Best Bet show, which is a very profitable show, by the way. Uh, if people tuned into that one. I think we went six for nine across the nine bets, all at plus money. Actually, no, the, the one that I lost, I had Zalatoris top 20 at minus 105. And obviously, that wasn't a winner. So that sucked. Uh, but uh, but Batia has made the cut five times so far in 2024, and he's finished top 20 every time he's made the cut. And I enjoyed that show last week because you see it. Uh, you guys were talking about a very eventful month in gambling. Oh, yeah. I never got your take on that. Show A? Or all of like, or all it's of been it. a bad month for, for gambling. This is big trouble. This is big trouble. No, it's not. We're just. No, no, no. I don't even mean the sports part. I just mean all of it. Like, it's just, uh, okay, let's just keep it to show. Hey, I don't need to go on a rant. We, you do those shows like quarter yearly update on sports betting industry. He bets. I'm not saying he bets baseball, but you can't lose that much money. To lose that much money means you're betting 72 million, like in total wagers. Um, you don't get that credit line. Matt Damon gets that credit line. Ben Affleck gets that credit line. Toby Maguire gets that credit line. Dana White gets that credit line. Fucking interpreter don't get that shit. I'm sorry. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. So Shohei likes to bet NBA. He likes to bet NFL. I'm hopeful he doesn't bet baseball. Yeah, but I'm not. I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful he's smart enough that he doesn't bet baseball. He wouldn't have lost 4 million bucks if he was actually betting baseball. So I think he just likes to bet NBA and, and NFL football or, or whatever he bets over whatever Japan stuff he likes to bet. But I'm not convinced that he bets baseball, but I'm convinced that he bets. Unequ like, he bets. He's a better. He's one of us. Yeah, which is, I mean, I guess technically, if you do it at an offshore, it would be illegal in California. But, you know, in most places, that's not illegal, no matter who you are. I just, it was always my point that, it's going to be a black eye, especially with all the gambling companies in cahoots with all the leagues now, because the leagues are just happily, just like I am, just like you are, just like everyone is. Just g give me the money. You got money to spend sports books? I'll take some of your money. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about let's talk about how great all the sports books are. I, I'm I'm pro that. Trust me. I wouldn't have a house if that wasn't the case. But yeah, and I like 
like a lot of people in this space, Pat, in that area, in that like couple year window where where um, legalization was first starting, like the rates we could get for talking about these books were incredible. Like I made money off legalization also. So I'd be hypocritical to be like, uh oh, that was bad. Um, right. Like, like I, I profited off of this wave happening. Sure. But, he, but, 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 but here's what it is though, is that I, I just, maybe I'm wrong on this and maybe just, this is just a very rose colored glasses way of thinking about it. But I feel like this shit has been going on for years, but because gambling wasn't legal, there was no one to actually report it. So no one ever noticed and went uncaught and now that this books are legal and they do have regulation and they do have to report to the government that they have to report this shit if it happens so you'll probably see more quote-unquote scandals because they're actually catching them now yeah that nba scandal is hysterical a guy trying to bet that much money on a prop anyone who bets props knows you're lucky you get like a you get a grand like maybe for a couple weeks you win at that then you're down quick and you're down again no like even First time, like no one gets that stuff on a prop. So dudes just want to shoot themselves in the foot. I don't know. Maybe they should slow roll. Maybe there'll be a couple smart ones and know how to like slow roll it. They know the numbers they can bet to keep greasing the wheel without setting off alarms. But yeah, you're right. They catch things because it's reported. I don't deny that's a positive of the situation. I just I don't want I, I don't want to say it's glamorous. a positive I, I don't want to say it's a positive or a negative. I'm just saying that they are catching it now. And it is my theory that this has just been happening for years. It and the only reason Otani got caught is because there was like an FBI raid on whatever bookie that he had. Yeah, I guess that's part of it too. You're betting with the bookie. If bookie's big enough, you could be get caught up in something that really wasn't your fault in a way despite you're breaking some rules yeah i don't know i'm i'm naive enough to think he was not betting on baseball because i think he would have won more money i mean i've seen a lot of these ex-athletes try to make i mean we're bad enough at making bets and predictions these ex-athletes are horrible at it so why would an active athlete be any good at betting well i mean like he could bet on himself to do what? Or against himself in like occasional spots. Like if he ever gets blown up by the Oakland A's playing like plus 350 or something. I don't know if that's a baseball line, but, you know, plus 210 and whatever. Um, Yeah, he bets. I don't know what he bets, but th- uh, there's no way he bets props to his friend for being the fall guy, I guess. Because that's what you do. Yeah, it's part, of, it's part of being on the team. Is you got One person is a designated fall guy. Yeah good for yeah that's that's part of the gigs that's part of the gig and that guy was living the good life I'm sure he was making a decent amount of living but the best part of his life was just getting to follow Shohei everywhere and with that the hotels and the private planes that being the plus one came with like the lifestyle being the plus one came with was probably worth more than the actual salary he was making um yeah I threw this out on Twitter very early on Monday morning because I was digging into live at Doral to try to get like the course info and everything like that because I think this is the best two tournament stretch that live has being at Doral then it's the Masters but then they go to Adelaide at the end of April as well which was by far their best event of last year and I think that Doral the week before the Masters is going to be really good so I was like somewhat excited to go like dig into live and like I'm gonna watch it a ton this week because uh, I really like Doral I mean that's always been one of the drawbacks of live. They're going to these courses that are just like, well, I don't know if this course is any good or not. I know I like Doral uh, and I get to see all of like some of my favorite players play it. So I'm, I'm in on that and the crowds in Adelaide are going to be awesome. But here's why live sucks. And they do it to themselves. They spend $40 billion to travel the world on golfers. And then I go to their website to try to find information. And it's very clearly just someone on chat GPT posting stuff to the site. There's no grammatical errors. There's no spelling mistakes. But I want to read you the course details of what is on the Live website. And the formatting is really bizarre. Like there's one space between one paragraph. Then there's three spaces between another one. And then two. It, it's a hack website. Like How do you spend this much money? And you have a hack. You have a website that looks worse than the XFL's website in fucking 2002. Yeah. The CFL's website, which everyone hates, uh, is better. I, you're, that, that's the thing. 
and that we were Paul in some ways in the early going. I was an apologist in some of this stuff, despite having my qualms with live. I say like this is like they just started. They might have started quicker than they wanted. Like you got to give them a little bit of time on these around the edges things. But no, no, you've got to. And the website that's as important as you know anyone but like eight of the good golfers that they pay yeah like look, i mean that look the, the pga tour app sucks that's why you should become a member at fantasy national using fantasy national.com slash mayo get 20 percent off get yourself in on the better leaderboard that we created but when you go to pga tour.com you know it seems like a professional website this seems like a fucking geo cities website that someone spun up like it's just a bad look for if you want to be taken seriously that when the first thing that people search to go find information about you shouldn't look like someone's blog from 15 years ago. So here's what it says. And just with AI writing, like at least pay a copy editor to touch it up a little bit. It's like they're afraid of pronouns. Like, they're, they're trying to you know, be like, oh, we can't touch pronouns. They just use the word the all the time. And like, just, just listen to this. The blue monster has been earning its name for over half a century, taming the greats of our game with its endless perils. This 7,590 yard course is Practically more water than land. So vast are the lakes that lie in wait around every corner. The fairways are wafer thin. The greens are fiercely guarded. And the 18th hole is one of the most ruthless finishers in all of golf. The 2023 team championship was held here and produced a moment of magic that will live long in the memory. Not in memory, in the memory. Bryson DeChambeau hit a Hail Mary birdie on the 16th, which came from behind the hospitality stand, a pivotal moment as his Crusher's GC clinched one of their famous comebacks. That's the kind of thing that can happen at the Blue Monster. Now, who's going to pull a rabbit from the hat this time? What the fuck is that? It's like they asked, they're not even like the new chat GPT, like the old version. Like, write me up a course preview for Doral, please. And this is what came out. Your Hudson Swafford budget should not <laughs> be bigger than your website budget. Should no, just like all the money to. I spend. hate a like, lot of this, things. I, this, I, this is there's where a you lot skip. of things on the website that I've hated. And it's the first go to no. of like where we're trying to find information or trying to find scores. It's just it's so difficult. It seems like such a weird nitpick. I understand that. But, like, if you're a smaller organization that's just up and coming, like, you think this would be the thing that you'd be crushing the PGA at? Like, better tech, because their tech is, like, old. Yeah, but these sorts of things are so important in today's age that you would think that they would realize the importance of, like, a sharp, professional website. Um my, my the thing I hate the most about the website is when you go to the leaderboard, it gives you by default, it gives you the team leaderboard. And I fucking hate how they play team golf. There is such a thing as team golf. They don't play it. They don't play it over there. Whatever that is, that's not team golf. Um, right. You want to do like three man alternate shots? Like, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. I will buckle the fuck up. That's team golf. Don't get crazy. That's team golf. Not like your own fucking ball for for three days. That's not team golf. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I, I like um, I like I, 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 I like their team golf format at Doral for their championship last year when it was like the captain yes. versus the captain and then two guys an alternate yeah. shot and then like another thing like that seemed a lot more fun. That's team golf. That's team golf. Sure. If there's elimination and other guys are are dying at the dying as other people advance and your teams in there the. That's team golf. Um, I did, you know, say some not nice things, but like any, well, I'm sure there's golf fans that aren't, but like you, like I'm fired up to watch Doral. A, it's been a while since Liv has been in this time zone, our time zone. So, you know, we don't have to just, that makes it easier. But those players, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau, yes, there are others, but to get to watch those guys play Doral, like I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care in what format, really. Um, uh, that that excites me. I want to bet Bryson. Did you see the Bryson round that he played with the rollback ball? 
No. He played nine. Is that like a content piece? Yeah, he did a content piece where he was testing out the new rollback ball. And it was just him complaining about the entire time that oh, it didn't no. go far. He's like, you know, usually when I miss hit this, it goes dead straight. And he just like hit a hook into the woods or something <laughs> like that. He's like, I don't like this at all. He was just complaining about, hey, I hit a bad shot. Why did it turn out so bad? Was essentially the takeaway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I like uh, Bryson. This oh well, yeah, I obviously got to watch John Rom play Doral. Oh, like has he ever even played it? Oh, that I don't know. I can I can effort that for you. I don't remember. He I might know, have been a rookie. I, I remember that he's never won in Florida. So that's great. Yeah, and if John Rom wins Doral, and obviously I did a uh, you know thirty seconds twenty minutes ago, but probably be like okay, I think John Rom can win the Masters now. When was the last time they played Durrell? They used to play it in March, right? Yeah, it was a WGC, I feel. I know, but did that get when they, that got taken away? Was it for Chipotle Peck? Yes, but because of Trump, right? I think so, like, but now I don't remember. Like, Rom didn't really start playing full time until like the end of 2016. So, no, yeah, so he... that would have been right around the last year. So maybe, but that would have been a WGC. Maybe he wasn't qualified for it yet. Maybe. He also, that was at the very beginnings of ROM. The Cadillac Championship went to 2016. So no, he didn't play it. I cannot wait. I love that course. Um, so it's exciting just to be able to see that again. Let's jump to the Valero. Texas Open, where Rory is the betting favorite this week, eight to one. If you just said he's eleven to one to win the Masters, I'd probably rather bet him here at eight to one than eleven to one to win the Masters. But that's just me. Ludwig twelve, Max Homa eighteen. So is Spieth. Hideki is eighteen as well. Morikawa at twenty. Connors, the defending champ and two-time winner of this event, is twenty-two to one. Fitzpatrick twenty-five. Tommy Fleetwood twenty-eight to one. That's everyone below thirty at the moment. But there are numbers out there where you can find bigger numbers on almost all of these. Um, even Hideki. Hideki was the first one I looked at. He rates out the best for my course fit. He rates out the best for the modeling uh, in terms of what in particular that I'm looking for at this course. I think I might just bet Hideki. Hideki's been flawless. Like, his numbers are eye-popping. Like, it's not just one incredible barnstorm Sunday at the Genesis. His His stats are, like, eyes off the page incredible it's one of three golfers three four golfers who we probably all most people believe could beat scotty next week wants to start it early sure um yeah i couldn't argue with that do you have someone that you like up there yeah, so I did make a bet. I actually made a bet in front of Hideki, which kind of feels silly because you know me. I'm always chasing the nut. I'm always chasing the nut. I bet uh, Ludwig, 16 to 1. Okay. Any reason beyond I, that you like betting Ludwig every week? Um, <clears throat> It's a lot of that. It's a lot of I think he can manhandle this place. He's very few golfers. There's three golfers under 30 to 1 there that I actually want to trust, and one of them... I don't even know. Maybe two and a half. Because I don't know how much I'd even care to trust to bet Rory. But Ludwig and Hideki are the only golfers under 30 to 1 I trust in this moment. You don't trust Connors at this course right now? Okay. I guess I'd be more of like by default on the number with this field. Because he won here. I would say the number was similar last year, Pat. It might have been 28. It might have been 30. But I don't think there were this many good players here. There was not. No, the, this, it's similar to that situation in terms of number, you're correct. But no, the, the top end of this field is much better than it was a year ago. I kind of wish this but field... Yeah, I, love, I, I wish that these guys, they'd move Houston into this spot and we could get the field from last week combined with the field from this week and let them play that. Let them play Memorial Park. Because, I, I mean, I like the Oaks course enough in San Antonio, but I like that other course way better. So, yes, I really do like Connors, but I would absolutely be swallowing attacks and, and betting Hideki over Connors. Yeah. So yeah, sure. Connors would be maybe the next guy, but at that price, I'd almost hope for a Max Homa ceiling or a speed ceiling week or more Akawa ball striking performance. Like it's just, he's around these names where I don't know, this is like the banana sand set up some boutique spot and I don't like it. I don't want to pay their rates. 
Well, it, it's kind of, I, I would kind of go the other way. I'd say that that's kind of like what Homa is and what Hideki is. Like they are the artisanal donut shop that you see walking down the street. But Corey Connors, like sandwiched in between, is like a fancy Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. And I love Dunkin'. And I, dude, I'm the biggest loser who, when everyone's playing, I'll bet that huge Corey Connors price that never comes home. But I don't know. This one around these neighbors. I would really just think that fits is with the off the tee, with the approach, with that funny driver weight story. I thought some of the negatives about him were overblown, even going into the players. Like I'd rather trust Fitz, I, like at the bigger same number. I'm not even the big numbers guy. Like I bet golfers, not numbers usually. Now, if I hate the number, that's different. But I don't bet a guy because he's got ten extra points. Like I have to think you're going to win. I don't care about ten fucking points in outright golf. 15 points like what does that matter on a monday morning guys got to win the fucking tournament it's nice you like his number but i gotta still like thinking you can win um so yeah that would be my thoughts at the top and i bet ludwig 16 to 1 okay so no rory for you to speed scary speeds one here before and he beat like a legitimate crop of jabronis the year that he won yeah that's when he ended his long drought right correct because I had money on Tringali, like, who he beat. Um, that was the long one. And then even Tim wouldn't even acknowledge the victory. <laughs> he would still like almost claim Speed hasn't won yet. Like, um, because it was that bad of a field. But winning is hard. I'm just not, I'm not a Speed guy. I'd rather bet my guys or guys I like. It'd be Hideki, it'd be Matt, but Ludwig is already in. You kind of hit on Homa. His driving has been piss poor, but the results haven't been all that bad because he's putting the lights out right now. Like, is this the sort of tournament where you would take a look at it? Cause I, I very much doubt that anyone's going to bet Morikawa cause he hasn't really been great. Homa really hasn't been great. That maybe now is the time to catch them falling down the board that if they just can kind of revert back to what they do when there's pieces of what Homa does well, like the TD green game seems to be, I don't want to say in shambles, <clears throat> but the driving especially has been bad, but the putting remains really good that if he just breaks even, with his driver, hits his approaches like he can, chips like he can, and continues to putt like this, he's probably going to win. Yes, and to that point, although I don't think I'm going to bet him, you are not going to get a warning sign. You're not going to be like, oh, I see what I want to see, now I want to bet Max Homa. He's just going to win and kill his number. Like, when he fixes it, he's just going to win. So you're not going to be able to get the warm, oh, like, okay, I'm seeing what I want to see, I'll bet him at the next one. No, you're going to, he's so good that it will just come back in the same way you might hear me talk about Victor next week. It's like, it's not going well, but there will not be a warning. There will not be a warning when it's fixed. It's just going to be a trophy. You think that's going to happen with Victor, the guy who can't chip again? No, not next week. I just mean we will not see a warning sign. Like, we will not see a lead up. I think he's just going to pop. When you're that good. When you're that good. Sometimes you don't give warnings. You just hit ceilings like Morikawa used to. Morikawa has lost strokes on approach in three of his past four starts. That is the first time that has ever happened in his career. Crazy. Crazy. Been a bad run. Basically, since he won at the Zozo, it's been a bad run for him. He had a good century because I bet him, and then he got gagged it away on one of the days. But he came fifth there. Like, And again, it's not like the results are terrible. Top 20 finishes at elevated events at Pebble Beach and Riv. And then as soon as they got to Florida, it got real bad. Like the putter started going cold again, too. The approach was bad. Maybe getting out of Florida is exactly what he needs. Get him to Texas, and maybe he'll be good. Yeah. But again, he'd be the same. And I feel bad if people have been riding that, like hoping for the win, because even winning at 20 to 1 won't make you whole. Like, like you did get... I, Zozo was a blur, actually, so my bad. Um, he's another one. Like These guys are so good. They're not like the mid-rangers that show you, like, lead-ups. You know, like a guy like Grio or, like, you know, middle of the pack, mid-guys, back-end. They show you their lead-ups. A guy like Colin, it's just all going to be ceiling. He's just going to win. That's how it happens. All right, so Hideki is the one that really stood out for me from this bunch. So I can, you said there's still a 20 hanging out on there on him? Yeah, there's a 20, um, I don't know, like, because, like, with, can we say books now? Is that, or rather not? Just say there's a 20 out there. 
Yeah, there's 20s actually at a couple places. Okay, good. And okay. one I know you have access to. All right, I'll go find those 20s or I'll wait till Wednesday to use uh, my my 30% boost and get it up to like 25 to 1 if that's where I decide to go. Morikawa actually, just I've kind of talked myself into it, not that I need to talk myself into Morikawa. But after seeing what Connors has been able to accomplish here, like Morikawa to me has always just been the better version of what Connors does, Abe Answer does, like that style of game. And the chipping, weirdly enough, has been really good for Morikawa. Morikawa, which is not something that's always super great for Morikawa, that if you can figure out these greens a little bit, uh, you know, get yourself out of Florida, not a ton of water on this course, that maybe uh, we can just get him to flip the switch on the irons and all of a sudden he can be good again, then he can run away with this tournament. You would think this is a perfect place for him. I like your comp of like he like Connor has always felt like the poor man's Morikawa who could never really spike in a big moment with the putter. Yeah. Uh, d- despite the broadcast telling us how great he was <laughs> at multiple times in those moments and then him proceeding to miss all those putts. Other than that, I, I don't like fits like you mentioned. <clears throat> so we just dropped down to the next level, like the 30 to 100 range. Like, Harmon, I bet at Valspar. He obviously, he was coming off the great week because I bet him at the players, too. But now we get him at 30. He missed the cut at Valspar. You know, that, you know, I probably should have seen that coming after he he just didn't have it in round two at all. But, again, th- this could be a course where he plays well. The one that really kind of jumps off the page to me, I see him actually at 45 to 1. He's 40 on the board here, is Harris English. He's playing good golf right now. And mm-hmm. when you kind of take a look at what Valero does, like you do need to have, I know Connors is a weird outlier in this because he actually does suck at putting in around the greens, but he's putted really well here. And he's chipped really well here, which is just sort of an outlier for him. But then you get the driving and the iron player along with it. Harris English is kind of across the board is really good. Like him and Russell Henley were the two that I was just like, I can see them winning this week. This, this is a perfect time for these idiots to win. Yeah, a nice little sneaky spot for the this tier as the big boys potentially thinking about the major. Um, Harris, that lead in, that lead in, that warm up, you know, that engine revving, he's revving it. The results have been quite very, very good. Um, so I could see that. I, I don't know. I don't like the number per se, but. The stats show that it's probably fair. Well, what 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 what, what, the what about the, what about the number? Do you not like? like it's forty. Know, it's, it's forty five to one. It's Harris English. I mean, it's not like he doesn't win ever. He does win. Like he's won tournament of champions. He won at Travelers. He's played really well in general. Like this seems like a type of course where he could win at. All like, very good points. Like Nor- Norin leading. is thirty to one. Crazy, crazy, crazy. We'll not do it this week. I did it last week. And maybe I got to do another. Well, the charity thing worked out because it hit me a winner. Maybe so maybe we'll you should see. do that. Maybe with... I can bet a loser again and, and do something Look, like that again. I'm not advocating for bad form Tommy Fleetwood right now, but give me Tommy Fleetwood like 20 times out of 20 over Alex Norton at the same number. Yeah, so I can't help but ask you about Fleetwood in the sense that is he playing horrible? Has it just been some water balls that have blown up some shit in Florida? I mean, I would say that would probably be pretty indicative of not playing well if you're hitting the ball into the water. Okay, yes, but I mean, like, there's a, it's a fine, it's a fine line. Um, but, but yeah, the approach is minus eight at at API in two rounds. Uh, by the way, th- in two oh. rounds, over eight strokes lost on approach. That's not one water ball we're dealing with here. <laughs> I apologize if I tried to frame it like a singular water ball. The player is not much better. Well, actually a lot better. <laughs> Only minus three. Yes. Yeah, I, the tee to green like magic. He's usually a tee to green like hyper consistent. It's it's kind of gone at the moment. I'd hope he shows some life before the Masters. Yeah. Ben Ann is in this field. He is uh, 32 to one. He has Tim's one and done. For the week, he quit Twitter on April Fool's Day, and you got hook, line, and sinkered, pal. Yeah, I got got. Uh, just go check my Twitter feed; it's there if you need that. I like it was really funny that happened. Tim said he's his one and done, and then Ben Ann like you know grenaded me all within thirty seconds. <laughs> it was almost I was like, whoa, well, wow, this. Uh, I, I as anyone knows, I'm a big fan of Ben. I was even on here, I think, after the players. 
giving him props for telling someone to fuck off on Twitter who was making fun of him for missing the cut. Um, he's playing great. I'm not betting him at this number. I'm just not. Third, he's, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, Texas seems like a nice place. Yeah, sure. For him. Great. Yeah, he should play. He's even like a poor's Corey Connors, right? Yeah, I, I would say that he's a less consistent Corey Connors. And he has two top 10 finishes at this course as well, uh, including last year. So I think this course is a spot where you would want to use him. But I think as an outright bet, you know, lingering, probably the best you'll find is maybe 40. It's probably going to be less than that. That you know, I'd rather bet Harris English at 45, who's a better player overall. Yeah. Um. So it is a weird tier. Uh, and English would be your pick here for me. Yeah, you could maybe talk me into English, but I'm a loser. If I actually made a bet in this tier, I'd probably try to find the biggest Tommy number I could. Yeah, Tom Kim is doing the here. complete opposite of Harris English right now in terms of lead in your your whole like abruptly stopping sentences, but then continuing to talk through the end of sentences is it's very frustrating on a Monday morning. I'm not going to lie to you. OK, I'm really sorry. I still got a little poison in me. OK. Going down deeper here, Tom Kim is back uh, from his injury or playing poorly, whatever it was. He's 45 to 1. He's more of a wait and see with me. Even uh, Paul pointed out a better number for Aaron Rye this week at 55 to 1. That won't be getting my money, though. I'm taking a look at both Glover at 75, Eckrote at 90, and Nikolai Hoygaard at 75 to 1. All the pieces haven't been there for Hoygaard basically since Torrey Pines. But we've seen flashes of all of the elements that we want to see. He was really good at this tournament last year, except for the driving, which is something that he's sort of studly in doing. He is one of the better drivers out there. I really like this course for him. Uh, just one where he can go pile up, try to get to like minus 20 and outrun everyone. I does seem like a lovely course fit. I bit on one of those players. It's still available. I don't know that people necessarily want it, but there is 60 to one out there on Tom Kim. Um, horrible at a, well, he withdrew from the players with the flu. Florida was just a bitch for Tom leaving Florida. I think we're going to get right back to old Tom Morris here. Like consistent Tom's coming back this week. He's going to, he's going to play well. He's going to be in the mix. I bet him. Okay, yeah, I, I'm going to pass on that one for either the guys deeper or potentially Henley. I might even take a look at Batia as well. He's 55 to 1. You could probably get him up a little bit higher than that. There's probably a few 65, 70s still lurking, depending on where you're betting. Just I like what I saw. And again, I, I kind of say it every single week with him that you're going to see it immediately or you're not going to see it at all. And he's just going to miss the cut, which makes him very frustrating to bet on. But it, I mean, he got the win last year at the alternate event. Feels like he's lingering enough that he should be good at one of these places. I mean, my opinion on him changed last week, so I could easily, I'm in that mood for him where maybe I could easily be talked into a bet if the card allows it. I love so much about him. I think his flusher ways can get it done here. Our no puck Corey Connors has come alive here. Like, let's do it. Straight flusher. Find the hot stick. This has been a kind place for flushers who can't pot. So I think he lines up he lines up very well for what I'm actually looking to bet this week. The other one I was thinking about, and this is from, I mean, I'm, I'm done with all these guys, from 100 to 1, Vic Perez just keeps popping up on leaderboards. Yeah, dry, yeah. Um, he can mash the shit out of it. Could be a nice course fit. Yeah, third, six, 16th at Honda, 3rd in Puerto Rico, 17th last week, gaining ball striking. Like The chipping is generally pretty poor. The putting is generally pretty poor. But he has shown flashes that he can do those things. I worry about him running down a bunch of these names at the top, but I think this is the right type of course to go do that at. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm in. I think he does what could be asked of this place. Um, who else did I have earmarked in this range? I love um, Davis Riley. He's been like having little moments. He's won here on Corn Ferry, I believe, on this golf course. Was it this golf course or was it another one in San Antonio? And when you say he has little moments, he had his first good finish in over a year last week. Yes. Um, I'm Yes, that's a big moment. There have been other like little spurts in the last couple of weeks of like, like a decent round. Like That's what? all I meant. 
Like when he missed the cut at Valspar or the players or Mexico? He sucks. I one time I thought he was better than Cam Young, like when they both came on tour. He was better earlier than Cam Young was, and then he kind of went away. Good thing he got that team win last year to keep his card. But even as like a prospect, like before they even ever either played on the PGA Tour, I would have guessed Davis Riley would have more success than Cam Young, probably because Davis Riley was much better than Cam Young on Corn Ferry. But other guys to potentially take a look at, I think Ryan Moore will end up being a popular bet. Baroff told me he's betting Grayson Murray at like three hundred to one or something like that. So I might just have to go with that. Baroff has. Good, good eye for some of these guys down the board, yeah. but I'll probably run back Bud Collie again. Like the Tita Green game has just been really good, uh, and I said I bet him in Texas every single time, so I'll probably end up doing that. And I think he's 150 to one right now. I don't think there's like a whole lot of love for Bud Collie this week, so I'll probably wait on that number to see if I can get a little bit better. And then uh, Paul's guy, Novak Nation. Uh, this was the site of his first career top 10 a year ago, and I believe he has six of them now. So I don't know if these guys are outright bets. Collie will be. But in terms of an outright bet, probably think more like top 20, top 30, something like that. I think that sounds a little bit better to me. I'm Yeah, Novak Nation. Uh, he keeps trending. He seems to be playing quite well, consistent. There's another guy here, though, Pat. I'm seeing it 100 to 1. K.H. Lee. 31st in Houston, ninth at Valspar, miscut at the players, fourth at the at Honda. Um, I don't know whether I'm making it up that these these Koreans are are decent in Texas at times, but see, like, and everything else is a miscut. So he's either like playing solid or or totally missing the cut. But that's one of the find me a triple digits that caught my eye. Yeah, TPC Lee. We're at a TPC course, so that's always beneficial to his success. He's won twice on the PGA Tour. Both of those times have been in Texas, not at this course, but at the Bunny Ranch. But yeah, why not? I don't mind that. So I don't have much over 100. I like that Vic Perez shout because I could be a sucker for him, but KH Lee was someone I was eyeing up. All right, well, Live Miami is at Doral, and you said you were betting Bryson? Is that who you said? I haven't bet it yet, but I would like to bet Bryson. It seems like it's uh, 11 or 12 to 1. So, yeah, um, I can get you that, a, a an 11 to 1. I was thinking Paul Casey at 27. Yeah, he's hits it long enough. He could flush it. Probably bet him. I probably have a lot of losing bets from the days at Doral on Paul Casey. Yeah. What's his number? He's 27 to 1. He's been close in the past few. Like in, I think it was Hong Kong, he ended up coming in second. Then he played the Asian Tour event that he was winning, but then ended up losing and ended up coming T6. But he has a top six finish in each of his, for three of his past four starts. I like his TD Green game at Doral. Uh, he just seems to be playing a lot better. I wouldn't be surprised if he won. I was also thinking about betting uh, DJ is 15 to 1. So I might go DJ and Casey on live. Yeah. I noticed that DJ 15 seemed seemed very fair, very fair for DJ. Um, when, when I was writing up those, because I'm doing the unofficial world golf rankings and ranking the top 30 players in the world, Dustin, just even writing him up was very difficult because what means obviously like winning a major means the most. And I do think that Dustin will continue to be con competitive regardless of how he plays in a major or two every year for like the next five years or so. But his week to week consistency just reeks of a player who just doesn't give a shit most of the time. I mean, they're not totally shocked by that. I don't know. He could be 40 to one next week. Yeah. And listen, I think I bet DJ at, I think I bet him at the Masters a year ago. I bet him somewhere else a year ago, too. Every time I bet DJ in a major, he does the same thing every single fucking time. He hits every fairway, he hits every approach to 40 feet, and then he does two putts. Like, he just, you don't get that, and every time I don't bet on him, dude sticks it to four feet and makes every single putt. He starts playing like when I don't bet on Brooks, and Brooks is just going nuclear. But it's, it's the same DJ formula. It's what Taylor Moore did last week, or in the final round yesterday at Houston. Like he missed a few of his short opportunities, but every time you're like, oh yeah, Taylor Moore's in the fairway. Oh, Taylor Moore hits it to 37 feet. Oh, Taylor Moore hits it to a foot, taps in for par. That's great and everything, but when you're trying to win a tournament, you need to make some birdies along the way. Seeing Dustin as low as 11 this week, so I actually don't mind that 
shout Dustin Bry- Dustin Bryson. Might need no one else if I do that. Well, I will take no one else if I do that. But I don't hate that. So I just want to bet, like literally just as a golf fanboy, I just want to take two of my favorite mashers and bet them at Doral. That's what I do here. Do it for fun. In his past five starts at Doral, this player has gone second, third, second, 18th, second. Do you know who that player is? Hey, just give me a second. Someone's obviously played there a lot. So just off the top of my head, I'm guessing Sergio or Louis. Bubba. He's so far down the the board that I uh, missed it. What are his odds? Okay. Like? Is he 100 to 1? He can't be that 75. One, Bubba Watson, 90 to 1. Whew. That's a number. You know, one. I don't know what he's been up to. I think he, I don't. Uh, the Mito profile could work here. Hey, I bet Mito the past two times he's played, and he's been fucking terrible. So no, thank you. So that's Mito. what he's that's what he's been up to. Good, thank you, thank you. Just not in. I mean, I don't think he's been like terrible, terrible, but just not in contention whatsoever. And that really fun kid over there is playing well, uh, Puig. Yeah, Puig. I mean, his odds are like pretty good here. Did Puig get into the Masters? I can't remember. I thought he like won a tournament, like an Asian tour event that got him in somewhere. You're asking the wrong guy, but I'm going to look it up quickly. Is David Puig qualified for the Masters? All right, yeah, this is a good thing to do. Has secured a second victory. Uh, He qualified for the Open Championship. Okay. But yeah, he's... That's too bad. He's good. So yeah, I'll go DJ and I'll go Casey. Maybe Bubba. Maybe a sprinkle on Bubba down at the bottom. But the, the weird thing about the live markets is they don't really move. I just feel like no one bets them. They probably go to the website to figure out anything about the course. They're like, I don't even know if this is a real golf tour. I don't know what's going on here. Make a, a Valero a Valero live double. Rory Dustin. Harris English Casey. That'll pay. Ludwig Bryson. Ludwig Bryson? That's what Bear Off's on. I don't know. I mean, I, I'd rather tail him on Grayson Murray. Durrell does uh, seem put, a course that is perfectly... I mean, I know he won the team championship here last year, but it really does seem on paper the best Bryson course possible. Maybe Neiman's just awesome. Well, maybe, he is awesome, but maybe he keeps it going. Do you have the Neiman Masters bet? Yeah, I've got I've got eighties and hundreds. Okay, that's a great number because I I heard other people because again that was one of the guys that I found very hard to rank uh, in terms of like my unofficial world golf ranks. I don't have him inside the top ten despite the fact that he's played pretty well because you know he has no top twenties in major championships ever. Do I know that? I've probably bet him in all of them. <laughs> so yeah, I know that I can make money right now though, Pat. Um, one of my 80 to one tickets at $75 on bet rivers right now. I could cash it out for 162. You're a winner. So they're, they're afraid of him, I guess. Well, no, cause his odds are like 28 to one right now. I think that's just like a dynamic algorithm. But don't you think next week, like if he doesn't play well in Doral and there's just the amount, like he's going to go to like 40 to one. Yeah, I agree. Like everyone's gonna get their bump, other than you know three three guys. Yeah, whoever plays well. Actually, probably week. more because there's two tours. A few guys. There's a lot of good players playing at Valero, and we got Liv Durrell. I'm actually taking that back. I think there'll be more players than usual who odds go in the other who don't get higher next week. I, I do believe that. Like you see the like I said, the fifties on the gala are out there now. Those will be sixty at. I mean, 60 at worst, probably. I might even cash out my 60 now, wait for the 60 to reappear or potentially get even better next week just because he's not playing. Yeah, I would I would agree, but I, you made a good case. Uh, I like piggybacking the Spieth stuff as well. Like, it's all there. 60 does feel like uh, so short. I'm just thinking about his dad if he wins the Masters. Okay. Thinking about his dad, huh? No, I don't know. Well, you, Pat, 
I promise when you watch Sahith Tagala wa- golf on TV, every time he makes a putt, you can like hear his dad cheering. It's really cute. Okay. Quick picks for the Valero. Texas Open. I have no bets in so far, but I will be betting Harris English at 45 to 1. Maybe I'll wait a little bit if he's not a popular bet and grab him at a 50, whatever it might be. But I'll be in on English, probably be on Hideki. I'll be in on Hoygaard, those three, and Bud Colley. I'll wait on a better number for that. Then I'm circling the drains on, I didn't even mention, but Sam Ryder, Novak, Batia, Ekrote, Glover, Perez, that type of guy. I can only take so many of them, but I'll try to see where I'm at after I make my wagers. And then DJ and Casey on the Live Tour, I'm in on 15 and 27 to 1. How about you? I bet Ludwig at 16. I bet Tom Kim at 60. I could maybe, uh, other than that, I am looking at Batya, uh, KH Lee. You did mention Vic Perez, which I don't mind. I don't know if I could add Hideki though, but he would be like my other, like my other true favorite player who I'm not betting. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I could scrap all those middle guys and just bet Morikawa as well. If I, you know, does that doesn't take me much to be pressed in on Morikawa? I just don't see it at the moment. But I wouldn't want to miss out on it at the same time because that's me. One and done picks for the week. I believe that you won the week because both Tim and I had guys who missed the cut. I have back-to-back missed cuts after hitting Scheffler at the players. Cuss is taking Byung Hun An as his one and done. Who are you taking? I never bet it, but I'll follow this hype. Uh, Billy Horschel. Billy Ho, okay. I'll take Harris English as my one and done this week. Not a big tournament, so don't want to waste the big guys. I was actually shocked that Tim didn't take Scotty Scheffler last week at a tournament that didn't have a huge prize pool. That sounds yes. like something he would do. He also told me that David Skins was going to win yesterday. Oh, and my I, God. David Skins, two Sunday final groups. He actually played much better this time, though, so good for him. He didn't even play that poorly at Honda, really. He just didn't make a run like the other guys made a run. I guess. He just like played really horrible quickly, and um, you only saw him on TV when they were like marking other people's balls. Yes. This is true. All right. I think that'll do it on the show. You got anything else to talk about? Uh, no, I don't. I just want golf fans to know that this morning I was talking to Tim and he essentially said that Scheffler's win at the players was equal to Hideki's win at the players because <laughs> he was just diminished. He likes to passive aggressive diminish the PGA because he's like a true live bot. It's so weird for a guy who doesn't watch the live tour at all. He's a real big fan. We'll be, he's already hyping everyone's tires for next week, reminding us of how great they all played, which is true. They came last year. We had a lot of questions. Brooks, Phil, uh, who else played great last year? Well, Did well, Reed play well? Yeah, well, Reed and Phil ended up coming T2 with Brooks, but let's not pretend like they were ever in contention. Of, there was four guys who could have won the Masters last year. It was Rom and Brooks were a level above and Cantley and Vic. Those were the only four who had any chance of winning going into the weekend. And then Vic and Cantley fell back. Brooks and Rom ended up dueling and Rom just kind of ran away with it. Like Phil and Reed finished like three hours before the leaders did on Sunday. Correct. But just to be fair, I think Cam Young might have also been in that like second tier group of bodies, but you, you, I think he nailed all that. I will only defend those performances by saying they still beat like everyone else I, I, and we didn't know I agree. how they would play I, I agree but let's not pretend they have a chance to win this tournament when he no, said because no, i see no. it here he says that they dominated <laughs> like, that's not really true now is it and you and he now he gets to count rom because rom won it as a pga tour member and left for live <laughs> <laughs> like come yeah, on. i'm curious what the live player to win the masters odd would be next week Ooh, it's probably close to even money you get Scheffler, yeah. Rory, but then you'll get Rom, Brooks, Cam Smith, DJ, Bryson. Bryce, no, Bry- Bryson. What, what is Bryson to win the Masters? Like 100 to 1? He should be fucking 1,000 to 1. He's not winning the Masters. I think he's like 35 or 40 yeah, to 1. That's a bad bet. Bet him this week instead. Okay, maybe, but I'm just, I'm naming the roster. Um, and then the past champions. 
Yeah, like so I yeah, think- maybe close to a pick'em, maybe a little plus money. Yeah, plus one sixty maybe for a live guy. Yeah, maybe a little shorter than that, but we'll see. You get it like four or five legit. Uh, maybe yeah, you're probably closer. You're probably right. Be interesting. There'll be all sorts of fun props. I'm sure. We'll be in Vegas taking them in. That's hundred percent true. Everyone should come join us there. Yeah, like of like the live guys are third, fourth. 10th, 10th, 13th, and 15th on the betting board. Well, that's great representation. For sure. I mean, they just went and got the guy who just won, and he's the third favorite to win this <laughs> tournament. So, yeah. Yeah, it's true. But these odds are bad. Can't wait. That I'm looking at right now. Like, really bad. Actively bad. Just everyone's below 40 to 1. Everyone. So just wait till Monday and these guys are going to be like 70 to one or something. How deep do you think Hovland's number gets? 30, 28. He's 25 now. I don't think I can get that. I don't think it'll get north of 30. What about I have 30. I have 30s. I've probably been sitting on them. For literally a full calendar year. I feel like such a douche. To make that bet today. You said 28 to 1 is available. You win some, you lose some. What do but you But I thought he would be in the like, you know, when the season ended, he was probably 12 to 1 to win the Masters after the tour championship. And he got a swing coach. What the year he changed his swing or something? What the actual fuck, man? What the fuck? He fired Joe Mayo. My cousin. That's what he gets. You don't fire any members of the Mayo family, and things are going to be very <laughs> bad for you, Victor Hovland. I, I want to see him rebound, but I think that he'll drop to like 30, 33, 35. Zala Torres' number is the one I'm really interested in because I still like him to win. He is 28 right now. I could see him being 40. That'd be great. Would you bet it? I already have. At what? 50. Okay. But yeah, that's a future bet, and you got better odds than it, but would you feel good about the 40 the week of? No yeah, way. yeah, yeah, I feel great. Like you said, my concern, like he, this is his happy place. I saw the stats, like the last eight rounds here, no one is better. No one's been better. He's healthy. Might not have, like, been putted great, but he never, like, he's healthy. That's That's good. He's evergreen for me at this place for a bit, I think. We, I did have a, a viewer... And it was one of the reasons, like, I was on, I did the research show and I was on Harris English anyway. But he pointed out that Harris English is 45 to 1 to win this week and Tom Kim is 50 to 1. But next week at the Masters, Tom Kim is 80 to 1 to win the Masters and Harris English is 180 to 1 to win the Masters. He's won at Kapalua, which a lot of guys have won both those courses. And he had a top 10 at Genesis already this year. He got the monkey off the bat, actually made the cut at Sawgrass this time around for the first time ever. That's not a bad price, 180 to one. Like for a long shot who's played like okay at the Masters in the past. That seems very adequate. Like I don't really want to dip in those waters at the Masters, but the way his run of form right now, I might be like a juice monkey and be like clicking if I be clicking a master's bet if I see life from Harris English this weekend. Like that that form continuing. Is 180 that's pretty big. It it is. And like if you just wanted to take a yeah, he's 150 here that I can play with the each ways. Like again, he's probably not someone I, I I mean listen, if I bet him to like come top ten, I'll probably put like ten bucks on him to win or something. Make the real bet the top ten, the top twenty, whatever it might be. But his run of form is good. Maybe I can just, you know, maybe I'll play the English English double. Bet him this week, parlay it with next week. For max winnings. That's crazy. Yeah, it would be crazy. But if he wins this week, you'll be feeling good. <laughs> It's true. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I come around on that 45 to one, not being as unfair a number, but I honestly hadn't thought about him, but I, but I hadn't loaded up his recent run. It's quite, it looks good. What do you think that the debutante market is going to be? Because Wyndham Clark is 25 to one and Ludwig is, where the hell is Ludwig? 28, 30. Is he? 24. Yeah, he's, he's, no, he's, all, he's actually right underneath him. I didn't see him there. So both of them. 
Okay. Um, quick scatter shot. We've had a lot of first time winners, so it'll actually be even more crowded, right? Yeah. This year or like even recently. A really crowded market. I'm trying to just think who's in it. Ekro, Nap, come to mind, Pavon. Um, yeah, it'll be hyper competitive, clearly. Si Woo's T degree. I mean, see, I, I live bet Si Woo yesterday. And he ended up, I think he was either four or five under for the day. He lost two strokes putting, beat everyone in approach by a billion. It's nice to see his, his a, approach. Sorry. No, go his approach. Go ahead. What was going to be your contribution? It seems like it's as good as anyone in the world right now. If he putts, he wins. He can win the Masters. He can hang with any of them. Any of them. If he putts, he actually wins based on that ball striking. He has longer odds than Tiger Woods to win the Masters. Jake Knapp. Oh, Nick Dunlap. He got himself into the mix after a nice Saturday in Houston. I He must have... He lipped out a bunch of putts, but they were never going to go in. He was just blasting the ball at the hole on Sunday on every putt. He had everything like three feet past, like aggressively trying to put it center cup. And he just missed by a little smidge to the left or right, and it was just bloop and gone. Yeah, notice that. He was all over it. All right, now we'll do it. On the Pat Mayo Experience, we got best bets tomorrow. I got Steve Banford. And Matt Vin Ooh. Vincenzi? Vincenzi 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 lovely yeah that's a good pair yeah, yeah. that's gonna be fun well we got we got Liv Doral going on and you know, Matt's been yeah. cleaning up on Liv so we get him I always love to have Bamford on I'm trying to get Cam and Byron for the Masters best bet show then I'll be back with Tambo on Tuesday and I hope to have a full show uh, I'm trying to break it up into two parts I'm trying to get the recording done an article done and then a discussion pod done for those unofficial world golf rankings I've been having a lot of fun doing the write-ups and trying to come up with the rankings and I'll be presenting my top 30 players in the world to you good people out there hopefully some new graphics to come along I'm hoping it all can come together this week but you know with Easter and then you know Easter quote Easter Monday Good Friday you know people are just like taking a vacation I know that there's a work-life balance, Jeff, that people are striving for and people always talk about, but I had a problem on the weekend with my podcast, Ad Buyer, and I texted him on Sunday, on Easter, and he texted me back within five minutes. It's like, this is why, this is why I'm with you, because you do this stuff. So don't yeah. overlook that part, especially when you're in business for yourself or you're in sales or something like that. There's no off days, because people will just leave to the guy who doesn't have off days. I would totally agree, and I... When you are in business for yourself, I'm pretty sure you have that sort of mantra or you won't be in business very long or your business certainly won't be that successful, if at all. Yeah, just if, if there's something that needs to be done, like I can reach out, not to say 24 hours a day, I'm going to get a response back. But there are like, if I had a problem on Friday, I because this is the thing that I'm thinking about, I had, I'm in business with someone else and I had a problem on Friday and they still haven't got back to me. It's Monday afternoon. Like I get that there was a holiday. That's fine. But like, Figure this. this I, I I need an active solution to a problem. I can't be waiting four days for this because I'm not taking days off. Pissing me off, Jeff. You know how it is, right? I know. I know how you work, buddy. I, buddy, you pump it out. I've known you since the first day I met you. I could tell you're you. You get her. You get after it. And you I, don't lollygag for nothing. You don't lollygag for nothing. And you ain't afraid to call out the lollygaggers around you either. I I, I know that too. Yeah, that was uh, did not make me the most popular guy around until all those people got fired. Shocker. You got fired because you don't fucking do anything. <laughs> yeah, I got fired too. Well, do you feel like you were really putting in your best effort, Jeff? No, 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 no. But uh, that's a whole other story. I told them, like, I we had a conversation and they just, like, pulled the rug. Like, I was ready to just, like, leave. Just, you know, we were talking about it. It's literally talking about it. So can't be that upset, but um, and I don't mean talking about it with you. I mean talking about it with them. Remember when but I then had the other guys that like kind of took over were like, no, we're just gonna do that now. So that's fine. That's yeah. Cool. Remember when I had you on a show using your fake name and then I got suspended? Yeah, I appreciate that. That's <laughs> like I'd take a bullet for you on that. That was fun. I mean that. No, but that's like you know that's uh, like uh, you know like uh, that's a man of honor. That's loyalty. That's the shit. That's the shit that. That works for me. So uh, a forever in debt for shit like that. I just remember they were like, I can't believe you did this. 
I got like called in. So I got suspended three days with pay. And when I was leaving, I was like, do you want me to finish my show that I'm doing right now so I can get it there? They're like, oh, yeah, you can stick around and do that. <laughs> All right. Exactly. R- real tough suspension here. All right. I, love that. I, I still I, I smile when I think about that. I feel bad if I caused you any problems. No, but no, nothing to me. Nothing to me. I knew I knew the consequences of what I was doing going in. I do it again. I think we had Cam on that show too. Thank you. Yes. I love you. You're Cam, the best. Cam was <laughs> on that one. Uh, all right. <laughs> Fantasynational.com slash mayo. If you do it on Wednesday and get the weekly with the 20% off, you get the leaderboard and all the stats and tools for Valero. And then you get all of the ability to make your lineups, use the stats, use the tools for the masters. I'd say use the leaderboard app for the masters, but you don't need to do that. You can use the masters app for that because it is fucking incredible. Everyone should be using that app. Then we can go back to our regularly scheduled app. Have you used the app yet, Jeff? Or have you been too lazy to download it? No, I, Pat, uh, admit it was my first weekend. I loved it. You could see who's luck sacking their way through shit and you see who's actually flushing. I loved it. Like in real time, in real time. Isn't it just nice to open an app that has the players that either the full leaderboard or the players that you want to see and you can see just on the screen all at the same time exactly where they are on a hole? It is it is very refreshing. And even the other, like the websites, like the betting sites that do it, it was all off kilter this week. They were They were like reporting eagles that were fake. It was weird. Yeah, well, it's, the, it, it's also, too, like, I used to use the Bet365 one all the time, but the problem that I always had with it is, like, if I got off the screen, everything I had set up reset every single time. It sucks. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. So annoying. And there's nothing worse than in their setup, Pat, when they do the split T's. I don't need to see the... When I would want to see those leader groups, I hate seeing the guys at the bottom of the leaderboard, like, in between the leader groups just yeah. annoys the shit out of me and i wish there was a way to get rid of them but now that you have uh brought us android folk into your fantasy national realm it's not a problem for me anymore not at all all right we'll be back uh, like i said next week i got a ton of stuff coming i got these power rankings i got a research show uh rat house is joining me to break down uh, obviously he's caddied at the masters before we were going to do it earlier in the week but he just got picked up on the he, he texted me this morning he got picked up on the bag this week for valeri's on scott gutkowski's bag so he's going to be actually caddying this week at valero so i'm going to talk to him on thursday or friday on whether we have to wait for the tea times to come out he's either going to join me on the morning or afternoon depending on the split so he can give us some insight of the guys there this week plus the course and justin ray is going to be on as well to talk through masters trends that'll be just be the research show so we got a ton of stuff coming up. Plus, we're going to be live and, in um, Vegas. John, he he's friends with Jaeger. Yeah. I think he's even caddied for him a couple times in the past. And Jaeger's another guy on that first time Masters sheet that we didn't even mention anyone yesterday. And Buddy's a flusher. 100%. All right, that'll do it. Pat Mayo Experience, smash the likes up to the channel on the way out. We got some good giveaways coming for you as well. Plus, there's going to be a surprise underdog, basically free square for you for the Masters as well by using code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy right now, and you get your deposit match of up to 100 bucks. More information on that later in the week. All right, I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!